Hey, what's up, everyone? Morning, Cross here, and today we're going to be going over how to maximize that horizontal first step. And we're going to start the video right now. This is the newest edition of the Performance Lab. Reach your individual goals. You don't want to just talk about straight line speed. We also want to talk about your ability to be quick. We break down your video. Let's make you into the quarterback I know you can become. All right, so this is something that I think a lot of people have been talking about is really the importance of the horizontal step. And so what I wanted to do today is really go into, you know, how to really make that horizontal step possible and go in depth into, you know, what are some of the mistakes and what are some of the common things that we'll see. And so the big thing that, you know, I think about when going through and, and you can see kind of my my technique here in terms of, you know, this is more of a three step start, but this is this will carry over into a two step, three step, a four step. Some of it's going to change a little bit, but for, for the most part, it's all going to be, you know, very similar in terms of how to, to maximize that horizontal first step. And so the first thing that you really want to make sure that you're able to do is, you know, get a good bend in that shin. Right. And, and so as I'm coming forward here, I'm really bending this front shin down and I really want to try to drive my hips forward simultaneously, right? So it's a, a downward movement with that front knee and then it's also a forward movement with the hips and it's also a drive forward with that opposite arm, right? So as I'm driving through with my right knee, I really want to get that left arm out and up the best that I can. I've seen guys, you know, Trayvon Bromel, um, you know, there's a lot of great sprinters and a lot of great starters that are able to really get that front arm through a lot more effectively than I did here. Uh, and I think that ends up going really a lot more into the maximization of that front step and making the horizontal is like, how well can you get that, that front arm through? And then as you're doing this, you know, you do want to be able to maintain those hips coming forward. And it really is important to be able to get that, that front foot through, right? So as I'm coming forward here, I'm really driving this front forward, this front foot as far forward as I can, as fast as I can. So you can see on this one, didn't do as good of a job of getting my foot through, right? So now you can see the angle of my knee is a little bit different here in comparison to here. And because of that, it makes it so I don't get that same type of drive back downward. So that's really important being able to maximize your horizontal first step is being able to get that foot moving horizontally as you're hitting the ground, right? So that's the, the whole idea of being able to move horizontally out of that, that takeoff. And I'm going to be using that word a lot is being able to really allow you to create force going backwards because the more you can get that that force going backwards there the better you're going to be able to propel yourself forward and the faster you're going to be able to propel yourself forward so that really ends up being a super important part is making sure that you're able to get that front foot all the way through you don't want to get stuck with that front foot being too bent at foot contact right and you also don't want to be stuck with that heel cut, coming down to the ground you really want to try to keep that heel up the best that you can again you know this is coming from the best starters right so um the the guys that are at the top the even like ben johnson right like watching him start is is beautiful right because of how well he's able to really explode out and be able to maintain a lot of stability within that front leg uh, i already mentioned trayvon Rommel, christian coleman is very similar like that as well like they're so quick with their feet but still able to be so explosive and how they're how fast they're moving forward and out with their body and that a lot of times comes with how well are you able to move your hips right how fast are you getting those hips to go forward how well are you able to stabilize within that front leg and then also how fast are you able to get that front foot forward and through right so you can see here i'm pushing off this back leg and you got to be explosive there to make it so you get the right type of propelling motion within your body but then you also have to be very quick to get that foot through right so you can see my foot kind of comes off to the side a little bit so i don't get that foot all the way through the best that i can to make it so then that second step comes through with the same type of force and the same type of reaction so you know it's all about being able to maximize that that roll of the toes right so as i'm coming forward here I'm getting onto that front toe and I'm rolling forward and then I'm pushing off from that position and cr creating that extension within that leg. And then from there, driving forward with that knee to make it so I'm able to get my foot to come through as fast as I can. It's the same thing with that back leg, right? So I'm really trying to, with this right leg here, I'm pushing off that toe to make it so I can bring that foot through as fast as I can, bring my hips through as fast as I can, and bring my front hand, left arm through as fast as I can. Because there definitely is a correlation between how well you're able to move in all those areas, right? And, you know, this is the, the third area, right? That really it's like the shin, the foot, um, the hip, 
and the hand and when you can sync those up and it's the same thing when you're coming through here it's about being able to get your hips through right you got to drive those hips through you got to drive your right arm forward and through right and you got to drive your left foot forward and through and being able to get the timing there being able to sync all that up is how you can really maximize that horizontal takeoff which is critical in being able to really get a great start and you can see here you know i'm not going and staying super low to the ground i'm definitely you know not popping up right i'm keeping that chin tucked but you know i'm not staying super low to the ground i'm really trying to from here explode through with my hips like wherever my spine kind of ends up is where my spine can ends up i'm really just trying to explode forward with my hips and make it so I'm, I'm able to get as much left arm action and right foot forward action as i possibly can and i'm starting that from the moment i start here and then i'm just trying to carry that over every time and, and guys i would highly 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 recommend you guys watch your film like i this is two different videos here right like these aren't the same you can tell like these are two totally different actions and how it's coming through right this one's better with my foot right see how i hit came down and i hit better there you can tell that's a lot better rep than this one i was a little bit more upright in this position right had a better takeoff overall okay and a lot of that has to do with where I, I was able to create the timing. This uh, video is further along, right? So I watched this one. I think this was my first video. And I want to say this was my fourth. I started doing some two steps as well, or, or you know, starting like I was like playing receiver too. Um, and so being able to watch myself and see where am I making mistakes and understanding, you know, this is the focus on each one of my improvement starts made it so I was able to get a little bit better, a little bit better, a little bit better. And then you're maximizing that time, right? So I spent about 25 minutes probably on, on my starts, just doing different types of exercises and things as well. And, you know, also looking at film. And every time I got better, you know, I got better technique. And because I was looking at the film, it gave me the opportunity to get a little bit better each time. So, you know, I think that really sets you up to have a lot more success when you really are able to, you know, isolate what it is that you're trying to work on each one of your reps. And, and, you know, I always say this, like, this is something that I would love for you to be able to get more understanding of, but at the same time, like you want to be able to differentiate where is your specialty, right? If you spend too much time trying to understand, you know, biomechanics, anatomy, uh, strength training, exercises, and everything like that, then you're getting away from being like a sprinter or being a football player, a soccer player, or whatever. Like at the end of the day, you want to be able to invest in yourself to be able to create a program or a regimen that's going to work out consistently for you. And if you have to watch a lot of YouTube videos in order to get the information, there could be a waste of time in there. Now, you know, there is that side of it where it's like, hey, if you don't have the resources, then, you know, keep watching these videos, keep trying to learn, keep trying to understand. But I do think it would be a great idea to be able to eventually get to the point where you can invest in some type of routine that's gonna make it so you can stay consistent. So then you can focus on, you know, being the best athlete you could be. Make sure you're getting the most out of your meals, uh, read more, being able to understand yourself better, uh, instead of having to spend so much time on trying to, you know, learn things that are outside of what your specialty is. So, you know, while it is important to understand your body, you know, at the end of the day, you know, this is something that I spent hours and hours and hours and I watch video and I've spent so much time watching so many athletes that like, if you get a breakdown, you're gonna benefit so much because I'm gonna be able to show you where you can improve within your start, where you can improve within your drive phase, where you can improve within your top end speed phase, what are the drills to do, what are the exercises to do, you know, what is a routine to start getting yourself on, you're gonna get a 28 day routine when you do our speed breakdown. So all that's gonna be down below. Uh, if you're interested, I would highly recommend you guys take an action on that because it really will improve all phases of your running, whether you play a you know, specific sports, soccer, football, whatever, or you're trying to improve your sprinting, you're going to get improvements by, you know, really trying to focus on the biomechanics of your sprint every single time. So as always, guys, thanks for watching. If you like the information, click that thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, comments, or recommendations, you can leave those down below. And yeah, check out that description if you want to, or if you're interested in getting a breakdown. Talk to y'all soon.